So let's get some perspective on where we are tonight in this crisis from a former Navy SEAL who served two tours there in Afghanistan. Now a Wisconsin Republican congressional candidate, Derek Van Orden, and from the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Fox News contributor, Pastor Robert Jeffers. Thank you both for being with us. Well, you're welcome. Thank you, Shannon. Here. I want to start with a Democratic member of Congress who is also a veteran, Congressman Seth Moulton, about um, the situation on the ground there and what we've sent our military back into. So when the president and the secretary of defense claim that they are giving every resource necessary and available to this effort, that's just not true because you have Marine commanders on the ground saying they're stretched thin, they need more troops. So, Derek, how does that sit with you? You've served there. You know the situation on the ground. You know the Taliban, how they operate, how they think. Um, this is not a partisan issue. You have members of Congress across the spectrum saying we need to be doing more there on the ground. What do we do now? Well, they may be equipping the troops with everything they need, but the one thing they're not going to be able to equip them with is leadership. The Biden administration has abjectly failed the United States military, the American citizens in Afghanistan, our uh, coalition allies, and the folks that worked with us uh, in uh, the conflict that I was there for, for two different tours. So what we need to do now is buckle down. Uh, the entire National Security Council, as far as I'm concerned, should resign, and we need to get on with the business, which is saving American lives immediately. That's a priority. And among those lives and as well there in Afghanistan, there are Christians, uh, not many of them, but there is a community there. And this is what we're hearing about them. We're hearing from reliable sources that the Taliban demand people's phones. And if they find a downloaded Bible on your device, they will kill you immediately. That was said by um, Sat7 North American President Dr. Rex Rogers. He says it's incredibly dangerous right now for Afghans to have anything Christian on their phones. The Taliban have spies and informants everywhere. Pastor, it is overwhelming to watch this. And we know there are people for many reasons who now fear for their lives. And that includes the Christian community there. Well, that's right, Shannon. And look, as an American, I care about every one of our citizens being rescued. But as a Christian pastor, I care about the eight or 9,000 Afghan Christians who are facing extermination by the Taliban. As you mentioned, the Taliban is going door to door asking specifically if Christians are residing in that home. And look, I'll let the geopolitical experts debate whether or not we should have stayed in Afghanistan or even been there to begin with. But what I can say with absolute authority is we have a moral obligation obligation, not only to rescue our citizens, yes, but also to do everything we can to protect these Afghan Christians. Look, I know that America can't do everything in the world, but we can do some things. And protecting this small group of believers is a basic value of America, and it's something we need and should do. Well, and Derek, you know, I'm talking with some military folks there on the ground who are desperately trying to get people out. They say that they have uh, they're aware of arrangements and are in contact with people that are civilian flights, private flights and charters that will come in and get people. They cannot get air clearance from the State Department. They say the administration seems to be completely disorganized on this, but there are private actors who want to go in and help as much as they possibly can. Any way to resolve that at this point, other than publicly saying to the State Department, what are you doing? Well, Right now, I think that that's a secondary priority. Everything that Joe Biden said in that uh, press conference was inaccurate, misinformed, or intentionally disingenuous and a lie. Primarily that Americans are not having an issue getting to the airfield to begin with. Mm -hmm. That was immediately contradicted by the Secretary of Defense saying that Americans are being beaten in the street, and then he said that was unacceptable. So getting the aircraft in there uh, has to be the secondary priority, priority to getting the human beings, mm -hmm. the Americans, our allies and those that worked with us onto the airfield itself, because that is at least a, room, a partially secured uh, safe area for everybody. And Pastor, I would love to get a final word from you on, on what you say to people out there who are really struggling watching these images, feeling powerless to help these people. We've got COVID rampaging across the country, across the world continually. Yes. Um, people are really struggling and, and feeling pretty overwhelmed at this point. Yeah, today we sponsored on our radio station a day of hope for people you're talking about who are struggling. And look, Shannon, as Christians, we don't need to be fatalistic, but we need to be realistic. Jesus was realistic. He said, in the world, you're going to have pestilence. That's another word for pandemic, earthquakes, and you're going to have wars and rumors of wars. That's the world as it is. But thank God it's not the world as it will always be. The hope of Christianity for 2,000 years has been that Jesus is coming back again 
to rid this world once and for all of evil. But until then, there'll be no lasting peace until the Prince of Peace has come. He's coming, Shannon. That's a hope of every Afghan tonight who is a Christian. It's the hope of every Christian in the world tonight. Yeah, and prayers uh, across all kinds of denominational lines tonight for people there in Afghanistan. Yes. You mentioned the earthquakes, Haiti. We, I mean, they're getting lost in the headlines. And those who are suffering around the world from COVID and so many other things and, and persecutions, um, we should all be praying for each other. Pastor, thank you. Derek, thank, thank you, you for your service. Uh, and thank you for your time tonight. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Shannon.